What's up, y'all? It's me. It's your boy, Asmongold, and today I want to give you guys a first look at the Brawler's Guild as it's going to be coming back in patch 7.1.5. As you can see, I'm over in Shield's Rest at the top right of Stormheim, and the reason for that is because all of these elite mobs that are in the area have a very, very high chance of dropping the Blood Soaked Invitation. Now, you need to actually have this Blood Soaked Invitation and use it in order to participate in the Brawler's Guild. As you can see, I just got it from that guy. I killed, I think, three mobs total, so this was the third guy and I got it on my third kill. A lot of other people have told me that they got it very quickly as well. As soon as you uh, click on the Blood Soaked Invitation, you're going to get an achievement and you also get the, uh, the I guess, like the ability to participate in the Brawler's Guild on not just the character that you got it on, but also all the characters in your account. So you can go down to Orgrimmar or also for Alliance into the Deep Run Tram and you basically talk to this guy, the guy at the beginning there, and uh, I think that the Brawler's Guild has been in the game since Mr. Pandaria, right? So many people understand it, so I'm going to kind of skip a lot of the basic stuff and what I really want to do for you guys in this video is show you guys some of the new fights now the new fights are really really fucking cool okay not the bear fight that was not really that it was the first one right so it, I mean like it's not supposed to be crazy so this guy was the first one that I actually died on it's like one of those little creepy little uh, like nightmare beasts right and he basically, uh, he puts like a dot on you or like he charges at you. He's going to go after you, run after you right here. It's a horrific pursuit. And obviously you're supposed to run away. I didn't know that, so I died. Now, I had a really good time doing this. I would say, okay, I would say that the difficulty here is very, very minimal. It's not very hard to do. I was 890, I think, item level whenever I did this. And it really wasn't all that hard. So this is one, this is one I really, really like this one. It's Master Piku. So uh, you're forced to move forward and you have these balls all around the room and uh, think pac-man this is pac-man so you have to kill these guys and whenever you hit one of the balls it puts them into this moment of zen and whenever they have the moment of zen that means that you can actually attack them but if they don't and if you go through the the blue stuff obviously it just kills you in one hit but uh, if you pick up one of the orbs it will put them in this moment of, of uh of peace or whatever moment of zen and you're able to kill them you have to kill all three to end the fight and uh, if you don't they're doing that that serpent like that spinning kick and it does like 500k damage a second or something like that so it's pretty dangerous uh apparently um i think i bugged out the fight here because i don't think that they're supposed to be stunned i don't think they're programmed to do that but um anyway this one actually did take me a couple of tries as well i didn't quite understand what to do and i think that a lot of these fights are going to be really enjoyable for people to do and one thing that you guys have have to take into account here is that even though I cleared all the bosses in like an hour or something like that, I also have very, very high raid gear and uh, I'm an arms warrior, which is very, very strong at single targets. So I think that for the majority of players, this is actually going to be a pretty challenging and also fun thing to do. And you get a lot of rewards and I'll show you guys those at the end. Now Stitches here, uh, the way Stitches works is he's got that, that little pool of, uh, I don't know, like of unholy like blight or something like that. And if you have 10 stacks of that, it kills you. And if you run out, he grips you back in to clear your stacks and whenever he grips you back in uh, basically it's slower for you to run out the next time so it's kind of a DPS race at the same time of like moving out and moving forward uh, I, I wiped on this one a couple of times too I, I had some mistakes but um that was a really fun one to do I really enjoyed it. this one really was really fucking annoying so basically the black mange is what you have to do is you have to stand uh, as you guys can see there's like that uh, uh there's like little lights that are gonna fire off the cannon whenever the light gets to the cannon the cannon fires and if you're standing in uh, in front of the cannon, you die, obviously. And he also has a charge, and so you have to reposition him. Uh, I found that whenever I understood how to do this fight, just going from one to the other, back and forth, it was extremely easy to do. But before I figured that out, I was getting very, very frustrated. Now, you can also, as I said, oh wait, I'll, I'll explain that in a minute. I want to show you guys, this is the last, this is actually the last boss of like, in order to get rank 8, you have to kill this guy. Okay, so what this is, it's raid tier. Okay, it's very, very, very cute. And he goes through all of the different bosses bosses in Hellfire Citadel, right? So it was like that was the, the first guy and then you've got Cromrock right there and so you've got the Grasping Hand. Now, I killed him relatively quickly, so I don't know if like you get to Arkham and he just does a finger of death and you fucking die, but that's kind of what I would expect. That's at least what would be funny. So he goes through all of the different bosses here, and then there's, uh, you know, obviously Gertog Blood Boil. Then we're going to get Kilrog and Gorefiend, and, and like that kind of stuff is really, really cool. I think that they 
a lot of these fights, there's like a janitor too. A lot of these fights are just fun to do, and I think that's really cool. And they're also challenging at the same time. Now, from my perspective, I don't think that these are as challenging as the ones that were released in Mr. Pandaria in terms of the numerical difficulty, but the mechanical difficulty is relatively similar because we're even seeing many of those bosses come back again. But now that people are used to fighting them, like the, uh, the, the thing where it's like the, the rocket ship on top of the shark on top of the raptor or something like that, um, I fought that one too. Oh, and then there's Felward Zakoon right there. You move out of that. And uh, obviously, since people have done it for so long and, and kind of like things have just gotten, uh, I guess like people have gotten better at the game over time, it wasn't really all that difficult. But I wouldn't really say that there was anything in here that was extremely mechanically difficult or numerically difficult. So I think that any player who's about 880 item level or so is going to really have no trouble whatsoever clearing this out. Now, you've got the Rumble cards right here. Now, the Rumble cards are, you use this card. I don't really entirely know how it works i don't think they're properly implemented but i bought a rumble card and then randomly it pulled me and this other guy into the uh, into the arena and had us fight this uh, this little raid boss and i think this thing is designed for like five to ten players and it might scale up or something like that and the reason i chose this chose this guy is because i knew what he was going to do basically this is like some uh some tiger and the lower health it gets the more damage it does i, I remember this very clearly from the original brawlers guild so i figured okay we'll just try this out and i'll see if i can soul the raid boss and it really did not go very well uh to be completely honest but the rumbles the way that they're supposed to work is whenever you use a rumble card or you somehow activate it i don't know how it pulls everybody in the group into the uh, brawlers guild arena and everybody fights the uh the boss at the same time now i tried to kite him around i tried to do a number of different things but basically uh the fight ended like I never even hit, like, if you guys don't know, like, the fight, the ground in the Brawler's Guild will go, like, go on fire whenever you're almost out of time. I never even hit a point where I was good, where the, it was on fire at all. So, it really was not, as I said, really that hard to do. But uh, the Brawl, uh, sorry, the Rumbles, I don't really know how those are supposed to work. Now, this fight, okay. This fight, I think that somebody would have to be on mushrooms uh, in order to actually think this fight would be uh, would, would make sense. And I have no idea how the fuck this is supposed to work. So he summons these ads. He has these debuffs, okay? And I don't even know what half of these things do. And then he just, he literally summons an army of cats to attack you. And then he summons horses that charge at you, these behemoths that are basically things you have to kite around the room. And occasionally your screen turns a different color for really no, I honestly have no idea. I find it funny that this guy probably has more mechanics than most of the bosses in Emerald Nightmare. But I, I've had a good time doing them. It took me three or four tries to actually kill the guy. And at the end, guys, at the end, I want to show you guys some crazy ass shit that he does at the end. So he casts all these ads and you just basically have to kill them. It's really not all that complicated. Then he casts at the very, at the very end, he says, let's get really weird. And I killed him before this happened. But at, in a way, I, I, I got a little bit curious and I wondered, like, what, what does that do? So I'm going to show you guys what that does. It was crazy. All right. So check this out. What is that fight? That's exactly what I was wondering. So he says, let's get really weird. And then look at this shit. <laughs> he turns you upside down. Like, I had no fucking... And you can still move your character, right? I feel like I'm in Luigi's Mansion or like Inception or kind of some kind of shit. It was really fun to do this. And um, as I said, it was a really, really good time. I think that the social aspects that they've added into the Brawler's Guild are going to make it a lot more enjoyable for people who maybe have still cleared everything but still want to get something out of it. Now, I'm going to go ahead and open up all the little purses that I got. Most of them I got from... I got Brawler's Guild or Gold from them. There's an achievement for getting, I think, 20,000 Brawlers gold. And you use it to buy the Rumble cards and, like, this, like, VIP access thing. But as far as I know, there are no actual items that you need to save up Brawlers gold for besides if you're just trying to get the achievement. And, and it's inside all of these little bags, they were just gray items. So I don't know if that was just because I didn't open up enough of them. But this is only one part of the bags that I opened. And, excuse me, I didn't get any items besides just shitty gray items. Now... Also, uh, you guys can see some other items here. This is the good one right here, the Rock Spine Basilisk. So a lot of people were wondering where the Basilisk mount is going to come. 7.1 came out, and everybody's like, where, "Where's the Basilisk mount?" So I made I made a friend here. I did make a, a little friend. He's a, he's a Russian, okay? He's a Russian, and uh, we, we got along real well. And so uh, he was helping me out doing some of the fights, and like you know, we were talking and, and hanging out. And so uh, we both got rank eight. And as you guys can see, that is the Basilisk mount that you can get. I had a really 
good time doing this. It's always cool to, I always think it's like kind of funny to like interact with people that are like from another part in the country and they literally, I mean, they can't really speak English or anything like that. He's using a translator and somehow like we get along and we have a good time and we enjoy the same thing. And I, I think there's a, there's something really cool about that. And that's one of the things that I really like about doing beta and doing PTR. So as you can see, there is a basilisk mount. I mean, it looks goofy as fuck. I mean, like, watch this thing. What? What? Fuck is this? It looks just ridiculous. But honestly, I'll tell you guys the truth. I I, I really liked it. I, I think the mount's really cool. I, I think that a lot of people are going to have this. So this is not going to be any 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 stretch of the imagination, any prestige. But I can tell you guys something is that I really enjoyed doing this. Uh, I had a really good time doing it. And um, whenever things are a little bit fleshed out, more fleshed out, whenever the uh, patch is about to come out, I'll do a video and show you guys how to do all the fights and I'll have you guys covered. Don't worry about it. But until then, thank you guys very much for watching. I hope that you enjoyed. I definitely enjoyed doing it. So until next time, thank you for watching and like, comments, and subscribe.